process. We, as uh, per the agenda, we had started in the other room uh, in executive session. Absent tonight is Dwayne, absent is Eric, and absent is Ileana. Seated for Dwayne is Ruth Ann. Seated for the vacant position is Kim. Would you please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Are there any additions to or deletions from the agenda? No, sir, there are not. Okay. Uh, are there any additions or corrections to the minutes from the March 8th, 2018 meeting? No, sir. No. Do we have a motion to approve? I move to approve the March 8th, 2018 minutes. I'll second. Been moved by John, seconded by Rich, that we approve the Planning Commission meeting minutes from March 8th, 2018. Signal your approval by yes. 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 Okay. Before we begin, I would like to make an announcement for our members in the audience and those on Facebook Live. We as sitting members of the Planning Commission take our role and responsibility and duties very seriously. When we as a Planning Commission review site plans, zonings, or other land use requests, during a public hearing, the Planning Commission is sitting as a quasi-judicial body. For projects that are under review by the town, we are unable by state law to discuss matters of the project when approached by members of the public outside of a public hearing. This does not mean that we are not engaged or interested in hearing from members of the public, quite the opposite. We encourage and appreciate public participation as part of the public hearing process. The public hearing is where we listen to comments, concerns, technical analysis, and other information provided by the town, the developer, and the public. This information, combined with the requirements of the Land Development Ordinance, state and federal laws, allows the Planning Commission to remain objective, fair, and balance when making a recommendation or taking action. Simply put, the Planning Commission is required by law to remain impartial to ensure that each project, the developer, the town staff, and overall the community gets the due process it deserves. And so the first item on our agenda tonight, uh, item 7A, is a public hearing uh, on the Country Meadows Square rezoning. We will open the public hearing at 7.03. Bryce? Thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. Um, as noted before you tonight is a proposed rezoning of the Country Meadow Square's eight commercial parcels on the north uh, west corner of Hess Road and Parker Road. The proposal is to rezone the property from Country Meadows Plan Development Commercial and rezone it to modified C commercial. This property has been posted and public notice requirements have been met. Background in 1983, this property was annexed and zoned into the town. In 1991, uh, town council approved the Country Meadows filing number one plat, which created it as an unbuildable tract. 
in 2004, uh, that unbuildable tract was divided uh, under the Country Meadows Square Minor Development Plat into eight buildable lots. Since then, in 2007, two site plans were approved for a child care center and a service street automotive repair shop. 2009, a 7-Eleven gas and convenience store was approved. In 2017, most recently, a dental office and 41,000 square feet of commercial retail space were approved, uh, all of which is under construction uh, as we speak. Country Meadows PD zoning was created in 1983 and was written to allow very specific commercial uses. As development and commercial uses have evolved over time, that PD has become too restrictive and does not correspond with the current economic conditions. The proposed rezoning would bring the zoning up to date as well as remove this property from the PD zoning that it is in today. In addition, the town recently completed an amendment to the C commercial zone district to update and define particular uses. The proposed rezoning will, allow the, uh, will align the allowed uses on the property with the town's vision for commercial properties. The town's master plan identifies Country Meadow Square property as a neighborhood center. Neighborhood centers are characterized as retail office and service commercial areas designed to serve the needs of surrounding residents. The proposed rezone of this property from planned development to modified C commercial is consistent with the neighborhood center designation. Staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan and provides adequate access, infrastructure, drainage facilities, and design considerations. And utility providers have confirmed capacity and availability. And the project satisfies the nine criteria required of the land development ordinance to rezone the property. In conclusion, staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the rezone of Country Meadows Square to modified C commercial. The applicant is here tonight and as always I'm available for any questions you may have. Questions for Bryce? Bryce, uh, did we update the uh, traffic study on this piece of real estate for this new zoning? The uh, impacts of the traffic that are there between the C commercial and the PD are extensively the same so there is no updated traffic study. Thank you. Other questions for Bryce? No, no. Does the applicant have a presentation, Bryce? Could you please state your name and address for the record, please? Gene Gregory, 367 Sandy Hollow Trail, Franktown. Um, I'm, I'm the uh, developer, builder, owner. The, <laughs> you got the whole <laughs> ball of wax there. Uh, essentially, we have tenants coming in. We're, we're leasing the building currently right now. And when we came in with a couple of uses, we had a brewery and a, a couple of workout centers. It wasn't allowed under the current, the old zoning. So we want to bring it in and make it more consistent with the neighborhood uses that we we're trying to make a cohesive center with, with the uses that you know allow everybody so they don't need to drive down past park or main street and parker anymore we can keep traffic more on the south end of town down there so we're looking forward to getting the zoning change on here to allow multiple uses that we can't currently put in our building right now questions for the applicant Thank you. Great, thanks. <clears throat> As this is a public hearing, we will open the discussion to public comment. Any uh, citizen wanting to speak to this project um, should step forward to the microphone and state their name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Lynette Clifford. I live at 19660 Culpeper Circle. My home is directly behind this building right here. Um, my main concern is if we put a brewery in 
and there's that patio that they have built. The people that on that patio can look straight into our homes, into our backyards. There is no privacy. Yes, they put some trees up, but those trees are very little at this point. Um, every door on the back side of that building can see into everybody's backyards. I don't have young children, but all of my neighbors do have young children. And if a brewery is in there, what is the time that they are able to stay open till? Because we do have young children that are school age, and most school age kids go to bed before 10 o'clock. I know we go to bed quite early because we have to get up by 4.30 in the morning to go to work. So that is one of our concerns, as well as smoking. Will we be able to smell the smoke from the patrons? As well as, I'm not sure how our brewery works as far as do they make it on site? Do they, how that works? And will there be any odor from that as well? Because we, we like to keep our windows open at night and during the day. We aren't fans of the air conditioning, so we really don't want to have to smell the smells from the brewery slash smoking smells. Okay. And we don't really understand what a C um, rezoning, all that is, if we okay. can have that explained a little bit more to us. Yep. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Can I get up and respond to that? Not just yet. Seeing no further public comment, we will close the public comment. Uh, Bryce, can you respond to some of that, and then we'll have the applicant step forward and respond to some? Absolutely. So the current uh, PD allows for restaurants and, uh, and bars. Um, however, it has some very specific language from 1983 that says it's limited specifically to these uses. And if it's not listed, then they have to go through a use as not itemized. So where typically we'd view a PD as a, as a bar and a, a restaurant would be, a brewery would fit into that because of the specific language, uh, the interpretation um, forces the interpretation to be more strict. And so that's why the proposed zoning is to see commercial. Uh, C commercial is our commercial zone district focused uh, mainly on serving neighborhood uh, commercial uses so think of things like well a lot of what's in that center uh, daycares gas stations restaurants um, personal services um, and uh, health clubs up to 3,500 square foot those types of things do we want the applicant to step forward Yes, uh, currently we have two we have two buildings that come together in the middle and we have two patios, one that they're both meant to serve the rest, you know, restaurant uses, bar uses for those patios. The brewery, although is not one of those uses that gets the use of the patio, it's on the inside of the building. So the, the two that get the patios will have most likely restaurants with hoods and that kind of thing mm -hmm. running in there. We've also, uh, the back doors to these buildings are emergency exits only. So there's no windows facing the neighbors. And we've done extensive landscaping back there. We've planted roughly behind both buildings 60 trees. And we've uh, congested quite a bit of trees right in back of the patio area to, as a buffer between the neighbors and trying to be a good neighbor. So that's it. So you said the, the area where the patio is is not where the brewery is? No. Okay. No. Uh, any questions for the applicant or Bryce? Well, I have a couple of questions. Will the patios be in front of the, of the brewery or the, or the bar? No, the the brewery doesn't have a patio use at all. It's okay. all within the space, and the the restaurant areas both have outdoor patios that were approved through the original planning, and they have retain they have a wall on the back that's about four feet high, to uh, with railings as a screen. So the patios in the back or the front? Well, of the, the building? you have a site plan, Bryce. I, I don't. Basically, I have two buildings. It's an L shape. They come together, and then the patios are in that corner. Oh, okay. And they split the patio. So, Commissioner Forrester, uh, Jason Rogers, uh, Deputy Community Development Director. Um, so, the, the best way to to imagine is that if you're looking from Parker Road into the site, 
you have the two inline buildings uh, that will then obscure these patios that will be pushed closer to the residential as it's stuck is tucked behind the buildings so you actually have from parker road you have a open lot you have the mary hill uh, school you have the uh, gas C store of 7-eleven and then you have service street you then have the parking lot that it sits in between all of those land buildings and then you have the two new buildings that are under construction as we stand today with the patios that kind that are hidden by the buildings because it sits closer to the residential. Okay. So, I apologize about my art here. But, <laughs> oh, that's fine. Um, on the bottom here is Hess Road. Parker Road's over here. The daycare's up in the corner. The gas station's here. There is a um, dental office under construction here. And so the residential is kind of along, along these two lines. And so among the buildings that are out there and under construction are the two buildings we're referencing, which are these two. And then there's a patio tucked between them and a detention pond over here. And then the parking is uh, screened by the, by the buildings. And where's the brewery part? The brewery, there's a restaurant space here. There's a wall here for the two patios. And the brewery is in the center of the building here. Okay. Do you know if uh, there are any odor issues related to the brewery? Um, as far as they do brew there, they have little kettles that they brew in there, and it's mainly small production. They don't sell outside. They're selling to their patrons. So they're not a, a factory, per se, or brewery that's selling to outside vendors. Mm -hmm. Currently, they're just a small enough brewery to brew on their own home brew what they sell on site. So there is some smell, but there's also, with the two restaurants, there'll be also hoods coming out of the back of that and they're going to be cooking hamburgers and you know food and all that so you're going to have two hoods eventually if those both go restaurant uh, that could be blowing you know fumes from the hoods so and that's already an approved use on the site mm -hmm. so how how high is the, is there going to be a wall behind the patio yeah there's currently, that, to, to, there's to, to, currently the tension a ponds? four foot tall wall right mm -hmm. here Okay. And then the neighbors have a six foot tall fence on this whole perimeter here that's currently there already. And uh, we, on top of that four foot tall wall, we have a, like a wrought iron railing that's about another 18 inches tall with pillars sticking up on it. And then back here, I've, I've put about 15 trees back in that area back there to help screen it from the neighbors. Okay. Do you know, will smoking be permitted on the patio? Uh, you know, we're going to follow whatever the Parker rules are. And, you know, since I'm not going to be operating those businesses, mm -hmm. I, I believe Bryce smoking is not allowed, right, in the uh, bars? Um, I, I know they're not permitted in the bars. I don't know about the rules outside. Yeah, and, you know, that'll be their premise. I mean, if they end up being bars, they obviously have that premise area. Mm -hmm. Whether, you know, the, uh, the alcohol, tobacco allows smoking in a premise area, I'm not sure. Um, to my last question. Topographically, where do the residences sit relative to the restaurant? Do they sit below the restaurant or above the restaurant topographically? Oh. Okay. These homes here, here they're about level. And there's a detention pond in here, mm -hmm. and I would say they're a little lower on the, on this corner right through here. I'm not sure where she lives in this. This one, <laughs> this one. Okay, so she lives here. Okay. Further questions for the applicant? So, um, you said you had about 10 to 15 trees back there. How old are those trees? They're brand new. They're about seven feet tall we just planted they're all uh, fur dug fur so they're bushy already they're not uh, uh, leafy trees that lose their leaves we, we did mostly evergreens back there and we've also planted all the way down behind the buildings we've got quite I think there's roughly 50 to 60 trees back there on the back of the buildings can I get a rough distance um, approximately from I guess I'm going to say probably the detention pond. 
uh, I would say from neighbors. the patio, which is from here to that fence, is roughly 80 feet. 80 and feet. 80 feet. And then I'd say on this side over here, it's roughly 50 feet. And that backs directly up to the homes? Yes. Okay. Any additional questions for uh, Bryce or the applicant? I just have one. I know you're you're not running the businesses, but do you have any concept of the hours, how late they will be open, uh, the type of restaurants? No, we you know we that we let Dick Parker dictate that the hours and the tenants will you know depending on what their business is like. There's some I've seen breweries close down at ten o'clock. They're not going to hear any noise from this brewery at all. And typically they brew in the mornings so they can, you know, get their product ready for the evenings. Okay. Bryce, can I ask one more question? Um, so what is the, I, minus the brewery, are there any differences between the, um, the plan development and the modified C? So the addition uh, is the health club is an addition. Um, there are also I call more refinements. As I mentioned, the PD itself right now is, is very specific and limits and describes things in 1983 terms, which were fine terms, don't get me wrong. But it says anything that is outside that specific use, things that we would interpret, um, things like looking at, um, uh, I'll just use a bar to brewery or, or, or things like health clubs, which is a personal service. Um, it specifically says that they would have to go through uses not itemized for each and every one of those. And so what this is doing is saying, rather than using the 1983 zoning, which doesn't match up with the economic conditions today, um, to put it as C commercial, which allows it to meet today's economic conditions, but also as economic conditions change, it would allow the town uh, to amend those in the future. I, I do have one more question about traffic. <clears throat> I notice in our packet it has two access points off of Hess Road. So the first one, the closest one to uh, Parker Road, is a right in because I've, I've, it's been months since I've been in that that 7-Eleven. But I think, if I remember right, there's no access out from there. It's only a right in. But in our packet it says it's a right out and a right in. So. So I, I believe it's a right in, right out. Um, those accesses were determined back in 2004 when the plat was approved. So, um, but I believe it's a full movement on the westerly one and a right in, right out on the easterly access. Okay, and then on the westerly access, is there gonna be a traffic light put in there? Uh, yes. Okay. Further question? All right, we will close the public hearing at 722. Planning commissioner discussion. Uh, the project does meet the nine criteria and it appears to be compatible with the other portions of the uh, center. And uh, I think there's you know good space from that to the fencing. I like that. I think it'll be a good project and so I'll be in favor of it. Yeah, I think the uh, project meets the nine criteria, and I like the change in zoning to allow more businesses to be in that complex instead of limiting the types of businesses that can be in there. Um, I, I, I do like the project. The fact that the restaurant and bars were previously approved, but you've got some additional things like health clubs, daycares, in the new um, modified C, I would definitely say it fits the um, the area, and it would be a good project. Um, I agree <clears throat> with my fellow commissioners. We've made an effort to keep our zoning and our design guidelines updated, and I think it's important that when we have the opportunity to enact that zoning and to uh, bring things up to date, it's good to do that. Um, I also know that uh, as for the, uh, you know, any breweries, restaurants, anything that's going to have a liquor license is going to have to go through the uh, Liquor Council. So uh, the public will have an opportunity at that time to uh, make requests for uh, additions and, and changes and 
uh, possible restrictions. So that uh, should be followed up with if there's members of the public that are concerned <clears throat> with that specific use. Okay, well, I, I concur with my fellow commissioners uh, and we'll be in support of the project as well. Do we have a motion? I move the plan Planning Commission recommend the Town Council approve the rezoning. Second. It's been moved by Rich, seconded by John, that the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the rezoning of the Country Meadow Square project. Signal your approval by yes. 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 people a minute to get settled here. Okay, we will move on to item 7B, uh, metal lark zoning. Uh, and everybody's got different names tonight. <laughs> Ryan, it says Paul, but. <laughs> I'm filling in for Paul. Paul had a baby boy last night. So. Oh, excellent. How exciting. Yeah. So Give him congratulations from us. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. So good evening, Chairman Poole, and good evening, Planning Commissioners. Um, I'll be presenting this. Um, Rosemary, can you switch it over, please? I'll be presenting the zoning, sketch, and preliminary plans in one presentation this evening. However, procedurally, the zoning and sketch preliminary plan will require separate motions and votes after public comment in Planning Commission deliberation. So this evening, Planning Commission will make recommendations to Town Council, and Council will make the final decision at the April 2nd public hearing. The applicant for this project is Karen Henry from Henry Design Group on behalf of Meritage Homes. Karen is not present this evening, but Steve Allen from Henry Design is here, and Richard Cross from Meritage Home is also here, and they have a presentation following mine. So this, lot, this tract is located on the east side of Crowfoot Valley Road, south and west of Lemon Gulch, and north of Richlawn Subdivision and Richlawn Parkland, Parkway and Drive. Richland Parkway and Drive is a Douglas County owned and maintained road. These applications to zone and plat this 90 acre tract of land from Douglas County Ag 1, Agricultural 1 zoning, to Town of Parker plan development to allow 267 single family detached homes 18 acres of open space, and 6.4 acres of park space. The zoning for this tract is being processed in conjunction with the tract's annexation into the town of Parker. This application is substantially similar to the one Planning Commission heard in 2016, in which the Planning Commission voted to recommend approval to town council. After that hearing and before the council hearing, the applicant requested a continuation of the town council hearing in order to finalize inclusion into the Parker Water and Sanitation District service area. The applicant has completed that inclusion uh, into the Parker Water Sanitation uh, District service area after that. So the Metal Arch zoning, like all zonings, uh, includes a plan development map and guide, which was included in your packet. This zoning establishes two planning areas. Planning area one, which is shown, shown in blue, will consist of land uses including detached single family homes, 6.4 acres of park, a community clubhouse building and drainage tracks to service the development. Planning area one establishes minimum lot areas, building height maximums, as well as minimum setbacks from lot lines for the homes that will be built. Planning area two, which is sown in green, consists of 18 acres of open space, which is almost 21% of the overall development. As this slide depicts, the open space consists of the Lemon Gulch floodplain on the north, landscape buffering from Crowfoot Valley Road and Richlawn Drive and trail corridors along Crowfoot Valley Road and on the east side of Lemon Gulch. So the master plan identifies the Meadowlark property as being located within the medium density residential character uh, district, which recommends an overall gross density of three and a half dwelling units per acre. The Meadowlark zoning proposed an overall gross density of 3.1 dwelling units per acre, which is below. The Meadowlark property is also within the town's urban growth area as established by the Town of Parker and Douglas County Intergovernmental Agreement. 
Therefore, the Meadowlark property is eligible to be annexed, zoned, and developed in compliance with the town's regulations. As with all zoning requests, staff analyzes proposed zoning against the nine criteria outlined in Parker's Land Development Ordinance. Staff has provided that detailed analysis in the uh, Planning Commission staff report, and we are recommending uh, that we have determined that it meets all those nine criteria, and we are uh, recommending that the Planning Commission recommend approval of that. So moving on to the sketch and preliminary plan uh, aspect of this presentation. Um, <clears throat> the intent of the sketch and preliminary plan is to analyze the feasibility of projects, including conceptual design of the subdivision, including street tree and park landscape plans, ability to obtain water and sanitary sewer service, engineering technical requirements like traffic and drainage, in conformance with the master plan and the proposed zoning that we just discussed. So the sketch preliminary plan depicts 267 family, single family detached homes on lots ranging from 5,000 to 6,600 square feet with 6.4 acres of park as shown in red on this slide and 18.93 acres of open space as shown in green on this slide. The parks and open space dedications are in conformance with the minimum requirements of Parker's Land Development Ordinance. So primary access into the subdivision will be from a future signalized full movement access at Crowfoot Valley Road with a new east to west running residential collector to be named Henslow Parkway. Henslow Parkway will also provide future access to the east of this, sub to this subdivision should those lands develop. A secondary access is proposed off of Richland Drive to the south. This second point of access is necessary to satisfy fire codes requirements for a minimum of two points of access into a residential development consisting of 40 or more homes. A second access cannot be provided off of Crowfoot Valley Road due to the site's limited distance of frontage along Crowfoot Valley Road between Richlawn and Lemon Gulch. Due to the necessity of this access, the developer will be paying for Richlawn Parkway slash drive to be paved to a rural, rural asphalt road section. So <clears throat> the applicant has in implemented two strategies to minimize the impact to Richlawn Drive and direct the majority of this subdivision's vehicular traffic to Henslow Parkway. First off, the lot layout and the road network between Richlawn Drive and Henslow Parkway has been designed to minimize the ease of access to Richlawn Drive. This has been accomplished through a series of cul-de-sacs and roadway connections to Henslow Parkway, Parkway that directs vehicular traffic to use Henslow Parkway as opposed to Richlawn Drive. Secondly, the intersection of Crowfoot Valley Road and Henslow Parkway will be a full movement intersection that will eventually be signalized. It should be noted that the expansion of Crowfoot Valley Road and future development along that corridor may result in Richland Drive becoming a right-in, right-out restricted movement intersection. The long-term access configuration of Richland Drive has been coordinated with Douglas County Engineering. So the minimum landscape buffer between the residential lots proposed adjacent to Richland Drive and Crowfoot Valley Road varies, but the minimum is 50 feet. In addition to the 50-foot landscape buffer from Richland Drive to the rear of the proposed residential lots, a six-foot high solid screen privacy fence with columns is proposed on the rear of all those res residential lots. With regards to the impacts to Douglas County Schools, the developer has agreed to pay Douglas County School mitigation fees at the time of building permit issuance for each home built as a requirement of this development, uh, the developer is working with the town and urban drainage to make improvements to Lemon Gulch as well. While many of these improvements are technical in nature in order to ensure the functionality of the gulch, the applicant is also constructing a series of pedestrian connections for the residential home sites and park sites to Lemon Gulch along Crowfoot Valley Road. Specifically, the applicant has agreed to construct a paved sidewalk connection from the boundaries of the trails at, Kof at the Trails at Crofa development, which is south of this development, excuse me, north to Lemon Gulch, and then east along the Crowfoot Valley Road, along Crowfoot Valley Road to the property's eastern boundary. So sketch and preliminary plans are reviewed against five criteria, some of which overlap the zoning criteria. 
Um, so staff has provided that detailed analysis of the criteria in the Planning Commission staff report and has determined that the sketch and preliminary plans fulfill these requirements. So in conclusion, staff has concluded that the metal arch zoning and sketch preliminary plans are consistent with the town's master plan. It provides adequate access, pedestrian and vehicular infrastructure, drainage facilities, and parks and open space. All utility providers have confirmed capacity and ability to serve. All public notice requirements for this have been met. And the rezone satisfies all nine criteria for zoning and five approval criteria for sketch and preliminary plans. So staff is recommending that the Planning Commission recommend the Council approve the Metal Lake Plan Development Zoning, as well as sketch and preliminary plans uh, subject to those conditions in that staff report. So that concludes my presentation. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Questions for Ryan? Nope. Um, how far does the, that rich lawn, how far does that extend? Does that go, that doesn't go all the way to Parker. That's not currently a through road. No, it, it terminates, um, here I'll bring it up, excuse me. Okay. So you can see on this slide, um, it terminates right there. How far are they gonna pave that, all the way to the termination or just to the end? Okay, yeah, it'll be paved just to the access point. Okay, and that's to gonna be a two lane? That's correct. And it will be paved in order to sustain <coughs> South Metro rigs? It'll be uh, paved to meet the uh, Douglas County rural uh, collector requirements, rural residential uh, pavement requirements. Yes. Yeah. And does that meet the South Metro rig requirements for, because you didn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I, I don't know. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I wasn't aware there were requirements for that, so. Okay. Weight question? limits. Other question? No? Uh, does, you said the applicant has a presentation? Yes. Okay, the applicant step forward to the microphone and state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Brian Connolly. Uh, I'm with the law firm of Otten, Johnson, Robinson, Neff, and Raganetti, 950 17th Street, Suite 1600 in Denver. Um, I'm joined this evening uh, by several members of our project team, um, most specifically Richard Cross with Meritage Homes, um, who's going to be uh, coming up here shortly. Um, and we also have uh, Steve Allen from Henry Design Group um, and uh, Tom Jansen from Jansen Strawn Engineering and Mike Roca, our traffic engineer. So at any point during our presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us and we will identify the right person uh, to answer the question. Um, I do wanna thank Ryan uh, and Alex, um, and I know Paul has just had a baby, so he's probably not watching online, but um, it's, it's been a pleasure working with them. Um, they have put a lot of time and energy into this project and we really appreciate all of the work they've done. Um, as Ryan made reference to, we're bringing this project back to you after about a two-year hiatus. Um, this project has been uh, in the works for a very long time. Um, Ryan made reference to the inclusion into Parker Water and Sanitation District, which is the initial reason um, why we, we uh, asked for a continuance at Town Council. Um, our, the, the seller of this property uh, was or, or is um, a, a water authority, and so the, the, the interactions between the, the water district and the water authority have been challenging to say the least. Um, but we're glad to be back here um, and talking about this project. Um, uh, Ryan, do I have a clicker or do you, you okay. Um, so, uh, and you can click forward. Uh, so, so I'm not gonna belabor this, um, you keep, keep going. The, the, uh, the site, um, this is just a bird's eye view of the site. I, I think you all are probably familiar with where it's located, if you click forward again. Um, just to sort of orient you with respect to other projects in the area, this, this project is sort of occurring, it's, it's a 260, uh, seven unit project it's occurring in the context of a lot of other projects going on in the area um, Ryan made reference to the trails at Crowfoot project which is to the south um, and then obviously the Hess Ranch um, and anthology projects are, are to the north um, the this within two miles of this site there are about 8800 um, approved or, or planned um, residential units um, so this is sort of occurring in the context of a lot of a lot of activity uh, next slide 
uh, Ryan showed you the, the master plan um, where, where this sort of fits in. Next slide. Um, so now Richard Cross will come up and discuss uh, a little bit about Meritage Homes, about the project, um, and then I'll come back up and discuss some of the approval criteria at the end. Thanks. Good evening. As Brian uh, stated, my name is Richard Cross with Meritage Homes, 6892 South Yosemite Court, Centennial, Colorado, 80111. Um, as Brian has stated and Ryan has stated, I don't want to, we'll probably go through this fairly fast because there are a lot of duplicates, but real quick about Meritage. Um, you know, it, as it shows there, we're in 16 communities up and down the Front Range, um, doing over 600 houses a year. Um, I will proudly say I think we build the greenest home from a national builder in the state. Uh, this is some example product uh, throughout the metro area. If you want to keep going, some interior product real quick. I do want to, before I go past the product, I know it's always asked typically um, at these meetings. Um, we will be offering on the 267 home sites, we'll be offering a 40 foot wide home uh, that ranges between 1,800 and 3,000 square feet, starting in the mid to high 400,000s. And then we'll offer a 50 foot wide home um, that's going to range between 2,200 square feet and 3,600 square feet that starts in the high fours and goes all the way up to the high fives. So I know that's typically always asked. Um, and then if you want to keep going. So as Brian alluded to, um, I've been the one that's working on this project now for almost three years, and so I'm kind of excited to be here tonight. Um, but we did, as this slide states, we met with not only the, the adjacent res residents in Richlawn, um, but we've had extensive meetings with urban drainage and the town. Um, I don't think there's a project I've ever done that I've met with the town more than this project um, prior to this point. So, but as it states, we, you know, like we said, we worked extensively with um, urban drainage on Lemon Gulch. Douglas County met with him several times, and we're currently working with uh, Trails of Crowfoot to the south of Bridge Lawn that's getting ready to break ground and start turning dirt any day now with the regional water line that needs to come down on behalf of Parker Water and Sand. Um, so we've had a ton of uh, conversations with all the agencies, neighbors, and everybody involved uh, around the project, if you want to keep going. The land plan, I think, you know, Ryan kind of hit to it. I don't know that we really need to go over this particular slide any, anymore. Um, this one shows a little bit prettier what we're going to do. Um, we plan on developing this project in three filings, um, each of which has parks associated with each filing. Um, and that's how that's going to work. Just another, another, yeah, and then just to reiterate some of the site planning and engineering challenges, um, Ryan alluded to. You know, we spent a ton of time, and the residents in Richlawn have conveyed on several occasions the impact to them as far as the traffic goes. Um, we met with the town on several occasions, with fire at the town on several occasions to try to re basically get rid of that south access point. And, you know, fire, it's required. So we, we moved that access point around 100 times. We did the site plan 100 times to try to make it as... Um, cumbersome as possible to leave for our residents to go out on Richlawn and so we worked we worked on that a ton um, like he said we worked on the the buffer a ton and then you know some of the responses I think it's critical to point out um, you know we when we first looked at this deal and we first underwrote this deal the Lemon Gulch improvements uh, was a particular do dollar that was substantially less than two million um, as the town got more involved and urban drainage got more involved, you know, it exploded to two million dollars. And so we've been, that's another one of the delays that we've incurred is working with urban drainage in the town to quantify the scope of that improvement, which I think as, and the town would agree that that's going to be amenity, certainly, when that work's done. So, um, so we've been working on that. Um, obviously, the safety of widening Crowfoot the water line and then the cash and lieu in addition to the 25 or 2500 dollars we have to pay a building permit per student we are paying cash and lieu for uh, almost six acres of school dedication as well at Platt and then if you want to go to the next slide and so some of the responses to the neighborhood concerns you know we first brought this this project in we were over 300 units and now we're down to 267 um, certainly some of that was to the buffers of pushing the project to the north a bit, to the east a bit, and, uh, and engineering challenges as well. Um, like he had said, 50-foot setback, extensive landscaping. Um, another thing that we looked at 
was the impact to the north by keeping um, almost 12 acres of open space on the north side of the gulch. Originally, the town had wanted us to put a pedestrian bridge over there and make that more of a park space, but we were able to uh, agree to open space on that particular part of the property. And I think that's essentially it for me. I mean, that's this is an example of the cross section of how you know Rich Lawn looks now with the buffer and then um, the proposed grades of where our project will be sitting below them as well as extensive landscaping and the uh, fencing that Ryan had discussed. So next slide. And this, I'll turn it back over to Brian. So I know Ryan uh, and Paul have covered the approval criteria in, in fairly great detail in the staff report, but um, we wanted to highlight a few um, points just uh, sort of in closing. And, and like I say, we'll be happy to take questions uh, once we're um, wrapped up. Um, so you know, just, just a few points. You know, in terms of need existing for the proposal, there's obviously very strong demand for single family homes in Parker um, and in the, the metro area generally. Um, we think that this um, contributes uh, to, to, to alleviating some of that demand. Um, we recently heard, uh, I think, the story of Richard's family member had a house that went on the market and had 24 offers within 24 hours. So <laughs> we all we all know how the market is right now. Um, in terms of the the uh, parcel of ground being the correct site for the proposed development, um, it, it is consistent with the master plan. Um, the, the the site is not encumbered by significant environmental features. It it doesn't uh, it's not home to significant wildlife or wetlands or anything like that. Um, the uh, the lemon gulch is, is sort of the main environmental feature um, running through the site. Um, we also believe that this this site actually provides a buffer between some of the lower density development that's to the south and then then the higher density development to the north. So this sort of um, slots in as, as as a buffer. Next slide. Um, as already has been addressed, uh, there have been significant changes in the area, and not not only um, the approval of, of uh, new new homes um, that will be coming online in the few, next few years, but also the development of, of uh, other residential uses and, and some commercial uses um, as we go further south. Next slide. Um, adequate circulation, um, as Richard mentioned, uh, there will be a new residential collector road that will run through the site that will um, take access off of Crowfoot Valley Road. That will certainly be the main um, access point into the site. Uh, in terms of working with um, uh, Rich Lawn and, and the, the required access to the south, uh, the, the, the goal was to design the land plan so that it would be a more circuitous route through the project um, to, to avoid uh, significant traffic impacts on Rich Lawn. Um, uh, go to the next slide. Um, additional municipal service costs won't be incurred um, that, that the town's not prepared to meet. Um, there will be a metro district formed as part of this project, um, which will, will um, finance the development of the infrastructure and then will also um, help maintain some of that infrastructure in the future. Um, and then in terms of environmental impacts, the major environmental feature is Lemon Gulch. And so um, the, the developer has agreed to contribute uh, $2 million to the design and, and, and construction of that project uh, to make that really a regional um, amenity, both as a wildlife corridor as, as a recreational amenity. Um, and, and, and again, uh, we've uh, conducted third party studies. There's no critical wildlife habitat, no archaeological sites on, uh, on the site. Uh, next slide. Uh, the proposal is consistent with the town master plan. Um, as Ryan made reference to, um, the project is, is at a density that's below um, the, the maximum density recommended for uh, medium, medium density residential. Um, and it serves other master plan goals as well. Um, we, we're um, encouraging uh, an integration between the built and, and natural environments with the Lemon Gulch feature. Um, it's a transition between land use intensities um, and, and then uh, it does provide a substantial amount of open space and parks. Um, next slide. I think we've addressed most of the utility issues. I'm certainly happy to address uh, any of the items um, on the slide here in, in greater detail. But um, uh, utilities will be provided. Uh, um, the developers bringing um, water and sewer lines uh, to the site. Uh, uh, the developers also purchasing um, renewable water credits uh, on behalf of Parker Water and Sanitation District and, and making a cash and loop payment for a well site. Um, Richard also talked about some of the school uh, uh, dedication and, and capital mitigation as well. Um, next slide. Next slide. Um, and not a ton to say uh, about the, the subdivision approval criteria. Um, the, the master plan is, is a, a duplicative criterion. 
um, the, the, the subdivision is consistent with, with all the requirements of the land development ordinance um, and, and the town's uh, rules and regulations otherwise. Uh, next slide. Um, the subdivision is obviously consistent with the PD guide that's been submitted um, and, and previous plans and then the public notice requirements um, have been met uh, or exceeded. Um, so with that, uh, we're happy to, to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and I know uh, there, there are members of the public here who, who uh, likely wish to speak as well. So um, we will leave time for them too. Thanks. Questions for the applicant? No, I don't. No. You mentioned a well site. Um, is that a well site that you're providing funds for, for par uh, Parker? water and sewer to drill wherever they need to drill it? Yes, exactly. Okay. Further question? All right, seeing none. Um, as this is a public hearing, uh, we will open the discussion to public comment. I ask that if you have a comment to make that you step forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and try to hold your comments to three minutes. We don't have our timer tonight. It's not working. And so we'll, uh, I'll kind of wave at you if you get going too long. So uh, anyway, and again, state your name and address for the record. My name is Wanda Wilson. I live at 7600 North Crowfoot Valley Road. It was 6900 North Crowfoot Valley Road, but with all the development, they changed our address. And that was several years ago. First thing I'd like to present to you you can, just, you can just hand it to the room. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's the wildlife corridor. That was produced by Douglas County, which I am a resident of. My property sits right there on Crowfoot. I am Ag 1. That came from Douglas County IGA in 2014. It will show you the wildlife corridor. I quite frankly need to know when the deer turned into elk and flew away, because that is quite a heavily, heavily impacted wildlife. Douglas County did that in 2014. Second off, what I don't understand is the IGA agreement. Here's another one. And in that particular IGA agreement in 2014, it stated that whole area would be a buffer zone as well as, look at it, it is low density. If we could bring up the other one, but nonetheless, we're on Crowfoot. All my, this is what we have to fight against. This, these folks live at Richlawn. I live up on Crowfoot. Lemon Gulch is not a playground, folks. It is a hundred-year floodplain. They have used 18 acres of their parks and rec as your floodplain. If the town of Parker gets that particular piece back, I'm going to warn you. I have lived here quite some time. We've been in the home close to 40 years. And Richlawn Turf was down there. They may tell you it was cleaned, but I would suspect it's not. And I would recommend highly to the town council, which I will, to get a minimum an environmental impact study. There is a lot of trash buried back there, folks. And that is, is out, that it's open space. I have a problem with it. I have a problem with what, what Douglas County promised us with the IGA, that that would be an open property. You, it is not like kind. They are way in, in front of themselves. I'm looking at a plan that said 2022. I have been actively involved. I can't do Parker. I, I volunteered for Douglas County, and we did a lot of this work, and we put our heart and soul into it. And I feel like we've been ignored. I don't know if you have, from the very beginning, all the packets I gave town council, I gave these folks, and you tell me there's 8,888 homes. Guys, that's 2035, just like we said. Now we're dumping out onto Crowfoot, which I don't mind the stoplight. I mean, heck, they go 70 past my home anyway. It's 40. I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm totally unhappy with this. I okay. feel like we have been cheated from Douglas County's original IGA stuff. I feel that 
the town of Parker is going to take on a heck of a liability. This, you also got to study. Okay, this is going to be the last one. Okay, Mrs. Wilson. That's good. That's going to yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's a study right there. If you want to look closer, right there, it's telling you it's an environmental hazard. That was in 2014. Nothing's changed. Okay. I reject this um, plan. I, I, I think they're ahead of themselves. I think that's why we did the IGA for 2035. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Town Council has all this. Good, good evening. Uh, my name is Sharon Lourdes. I live at 7151 Richland Parkway. Um, I have lived there for almost 30 years, but I'm only 29, so you take that for what it's worth. Um, just, we've been working a long time with the Metal Arc Project people. They have heard some of our concerns, but they have not heard them all clearly. One of the things is what I'm quite concerned about is the quality. And I know you're business people and I know you're gonna say what you need to say. But looking as a consumer, if I was looking on the internet and saw a Consumers Affairs rates them a one star out of five for Meritage Homes, I'd be very concerned. And it wasn't just one complaint, it was numerous, numerous complaints as far as building and the whole um, how they run their business. So I'll let you decide for that on your own. So let's talk about it. Um, this parcel of land is about 90 acres, which is what our 14 homes are on Lichon Parkway. We have one access in, one access out. Now they want to put their, their access to be one of our accesses. And I know they did move the main entrance to the Crowfoot Valley, which I appreciate, but we want our rural community to stay as it is in our little area. We have a dirt road because people have horses and ride horses, and to have that paved, number one, I'm saving you some money here, be paved and people not to be able to allow their horses to walk on it, it's not a good thing for us. Also, where the, the driveway is, or the street access to that area is, is um, well, the lights will be, all those lights will be coming right off into our neighbor's home that sits right on the corner there. Okay, I don't know about you, but when you move out as far as you can to get rural po property, you don't want lights flashing in your windows as 150 plus cars come out of that area. So if we split them half and half, okay, whatever. So if we talk about what the density of the property is, that piece of property is supposed to be, as your Parker 2035 plan says, is supposed to be low density matching the area around it of the neighborhoods. We are a low density, this is a medium to high density. I don't know where a medium density is 18, piece, 18 houses per acre. It feels like a little bit more to me than a low medium density. So that needs to be evaluated. Um, the second access, I understand for fire trucks and things, I totally get it. Um, I take recommendations and the word of the, one of the owners that this light's gonna shine into his house. He's a lieutenant for the fire department and he says that's not true. It doesn't have to be on our street. Yes, there needs to be two accesses. So, if you want this project to go through, use the town of Parker and use the builders. You need to either take your other access north, east, you already got one west, but leave it out, not on the south end. That is gonna affect our life. Not only the buffer zone's only 50 feet, really, and then you wanna put a six foot fence, is that what I understood? Okay, so there are right now living in our valley because of the building that's going on at Pradera and other places, the animals are being pushed towards us. Don't mind that at all. My dogs don't like it, but I like it. <laughs> there were two bucks in my backyard and there are five does. So if you put a six foot fence up and they come down the draw from up top and towards, um, what's that town? Castle Rock area and you come down to our area, they come down the draw, they walk across our street and they go down the side of the street and you can watch them, it's like the doe parade and they go right down to the water and the, 
right down by Parker Road. So you're going to definitely impact the wildlife there. Major, major, major. So what's going to happen? You're going to have accidents. Do they come walking through the bush and people are going to nail them? And it's going to be on our street. Really? I don't want to see dead does laying all over my our street. So anyway, uh, quickly, bigger buffer, 50 feet not acceptable. We're a rural community. We have horse property. The traffic study, I'd like to know what that traffic study looks like. I'm very concerned about the piece that's going in between us and Pradera. And then you're going to put this other 260 some houses on the north side of us. And then on top of it all, you're adding into uh, between um, King Supers and Stroh Ranch. There's another low uh, income housing development going in there. What needs to happen, and I'm going to give you a solution. You can, we can all whine, but I'm going to give you a solution. Make those exits north, like I said, or west or east, and continue making J.P. Morgan Street and let them connect their uh, property or their investment in their area into that instead of going into our street. It will run behind us. It will run east of us far south of us, hook in and go into where the Pinery Parkway will hook into Chambers Road and take the traffic away from us, not to us. Okay. Does that make Thank sense? You. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, um, I'm gonna say one more thing. Quickly. We've been go I'm gonna just say one more thing. Okay. We've been working very hard. We show up to these meetings. The last meeting y'all had, we weren't even notified that the meeting was canceled. Then they didn't even have the, the builders did not even tell us there was a meeting tonight about this. So we weren't even contacted. Every one of our homeowners over there, 14 people have showed up to these meetings, except this one because we weren't notified. So I would appreciate you listening. I want you to take very deep consideration to what I've said. And no, I've offered to they, for them to buy my property if they offer my neighbors all the same money. And that would be at least at a, a, a million dollars a piece per property. So if you want it, there you go, gentlemen. Thank you very Thank much. You, My name's Carl Wilson. I live at 7600 North Crowfoot Valley Road. Wanda is my wife. I'm going to read this statement because I'm not real good as far as in the public eye here. So, the open space area along Lemon Gulch, which would become, I assume, the town of Parker's responsibility, is contaminated. For decades, the landscape company maintained their equipment, their yard, and buried. Uh, in the proposed open space area. Wanda and I complained to Douglas County numerous times about buried trash, workers living on site, stored fertilizer and other toxic materials. They also kept and maintained equipment on that property and stored fuel. I personally witnessed fuel tanks blown over by the storms leaking into the property. I highly recommend you do an environmental study before you take on any liability on any of this vessel property. The entire, <clears throat> this property, most of this property is in a 100 foot flood, flood plain. I understand they're probably going to try to excavate this out, bring this areas up out of the flood plain. Uh, that may or may not work. <clears throat> the 100 year, the entire property is a 100 year, on, 100 year flood plain on Crow. Excuse me, I'm, I'm very nervous. There are little or no controls along Cherry Creek since 1965. That water came all the way to Crowfoot Valley Road during that flood. That could happen at any time in the future. Example, Lyons, Colorado. They thought they were out of the floodplain. They're still rebuilding their town. Are you guys going to put people in that situation in a floodplain? The inner uh, agreement between Douglas County and the town of Parker that's been addressed here tonight the surrounding use of rural residential horse property. It is not medium density, such as the lady spoke to. The proposed Maritown project does not, conf does not conform to the agreement with Douglas County on their annex agreement. Their annex agreement was to put in like kind housing. This project is entirely surrounded by acreage lots, horse properties, people with rural uh, plans moved out here to be in the country, not to be next to a subdivision, like a Maritage home. 
The, this proposed subject area, this has been addressed as well, is a high wildlife corridor. I don't know where they get their information that it's not a wildlife corridor. And I'd like to see their information from the Colorado Wildlife that states that it's not a wildlife area because I don't agree with that. And I think that they would be the only ones that could. It, lemon, is, lemon Gulch is a natural habitat corridor, bringing deer, antelope, other species to the water of Cherry Creek. Red-hailed hawks, bald eagles, the pebble jumping mouse, uh, coyotes, owls, prairie dogs, they all feed on that ground. They all live there. Some of the species like the owls have been there longer than we have. These, these animals have been here longer than we have. We're just gonna come in and tear up their habitat. I, I don't know, I'm really upset over it. I like my neighbors. Um, just, just one word to the planning. We're cutting every piece of dirt in Parker. Is there, are we gonna ever restrict? Are we gonna ever slow down? Every corner that's bare is being dug right now. Everywhere. I understand there's a housing shortage, but do we have to bring them all to Parker? Um, what are we doing? Uh, uh, <laughs> Parker used to be, I moved out here for horse property. You used, used to have horse parades. You used to have rural people. You've moved them all out. They've all gone either to Elizabeth or further out. The horse people won't stand here and argue with me like I will. They'll move on. And that's what they've done. The Maritaz homes that you say that the public, this would benefit the public, it will not benefit the public. It will benefit you. And that's all. Thank you. All right, Mr. Wilson. James Shadler, 5828 Rich Lawn Drive. Um, some good points were just made. At what point does Parker have to bear the burden of this housing shortage that we have in town here for the metro area? This proposed um, second entrance would be approximately right where our driveway meets Richlawn Drive. We do see deer and coyote each day there, and that is a floodplain. We recently moved there in July with hopes that we could start um, some farm animals and such and enjoy the unincorporated status. Um, one of my big questions is, how's that gonna change? Previously, I understand this proposal went through with approximately 13 more homes in the same space and apparently the water rights were not adequate for that many rooms, that many uh, homes. So my second question is 13 less homes and all, all of a sudden the water rights are okay. I look around Parker and there is house, houses being built everywhere. We don't have the infrastructure to support it. Um, I work in Lone Tree. My commute there is atrocious. Uh, Main Street, where it meets Ridgegate Parkway, is not fully developed. That should be four lane. We need a minimum of uh, Crowfoot. Needs to be four lane. We got a proposed uh, stoplight in there. Um, if you're driving into Parker from Castle Rock and Crowfoot, it says welcome to Parker. Uh, right around that sign is entrance to Richlawn Drive, and now we're gonna have 267 houses right there. Is that really the welcome we want to Parker? We used to be a separate entity. I've been here since, our family's been here since 2003, and we could drive from Aurora to Centennial, and Parker was its own town. We had everything we needed here. We still do, but yet we're building houses everywhere, and there's no infrastructure to support it and where our growth is out of control. We need to develop more businesses and not have so much housing. We got apartment buildings right down the road at uh, Hess and Matzenbacher. And And Parker, in conclusion, Parker does not need to have all the housing for the whole metro area. Thank you. Thanks, sir.
My name's Lauren Bankston. I'm at 5892 Richlawn Drive. Um, neighbors, we haven't actually met before, so nice. But yes, we have been to most of the meetings as well, um, although they've been changed. I think one of our biggest frustrations is, to us, they talk out of both sides of their mouths because they're agreeing to certain things for us at our last meeting. They were saying certain things about the paving and doing some stuff and, oh, we'll do all these things for you because they basically said, this is going to happen whether you like it or not. We don't care if you listen to us. It's going to happen. If it's not us, it's going to be somebody else. So you might as well have us. So our response was, well, if you're going to do that and you're going to pave part of Richlawn, at least have the courtesy to pave the whole thing because all of a sudden we're not going to be that rural residential anymore. And they said, yeah, we can do that for you. Now today they say, nope, we're going to stop it. So I'm really confused and I'm very frustrated that they're saying one thing to us they're saying something else to you. I think there has to be some type of consistency. We, I have lived in Parker for years. I used to work for the town of Parker. Um, I know the type of growth that this place has done. It's astronomical, it's out of hand. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot of it is what money can we bring into the town? And I get it, but at what cost do you have to do to, to some of the people that are around? We purposely moved out to where we are, we like being close into town, but far enough away that we don't have flood pollution of the lights, we don't have the noise pollution, it is a peaceful, it is a quiet place, and we enjoy it. It will not be that way anymore, I guarantee it. I am a teacher, I know when you have families around, I know what happens, and it's very disturbing for us, those of us who have all the animals, who have the different things, I guarantee you, as much as parents think that they're going to be great with this stuff, things are going to start happening, and that is not what we want, and I don't think that's what anybody really wants, and I think that that has to be taken into consideration. Where we're at, what we're doing, and why we bought where we did, and I think that that's something that you guys owe us that consideration and understanding, because we've been there a lot longer than they have, and I just don't think that that's they're being fair to any of us, and I just really want you guys to consider that. I know personally, animals out there all the time, I see golden eagles consistently coming through there. There is a pair of bald eagles that sit in my cottonwood tree. There are hawks, there are owls, there are deer, and a lot of deer that are walking through. So you can't tell me that there's not any of this wildlife that's around. I have pictures of them in my trees. I have pictures of uh, golden eagles and bald eagles actually fighting in the air. It's the most incredible sight and that's all going to be gone. They are, will not be around anymore if these kinds of things happen and that's a disappointment. That's why we moved out there. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Seeing no further comment. Could I say one more thing? Uh, no, we're not. That's Just real quick. It's only it's about the proposed well. All of us are on well. If they start pumping water out of there, they're going to disturb our yes. well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we will close the public comment at a twelve. Uh, further information, uh, Ryan. Do you have some responses to? Excuse me. Um, hello? Mm -hmm. So I do have a map that shows, uh, I'll address some of the comments I heard. I, I, you know, just generally speaking, we, this map does show the 100-year floodplain uh, designation, I believe. Maybe it, it isn't this map. Um, it's the hatch marks. Yeah, it's, it's actually the crosshatch area here. It's, it's highlighted in green. Um, is, the, is the official designated 100-year floodplain? Um, with regards to, uh, you know, wildlife, um, I'll let the applicant speak to that. They did a third-party environmental assessment, as they noted in their presentation. I'll let them address that. Um,
you know, I'm just I'm just trying going through my notes here. What we said, I could let Alex speak to the traffic study uh, more, more in depth if if he wishes as well. Um, One thing I did want to note is that we heard several concerns about the long-term traffic in the corridor. We are certainly aware of that. We agree the traffic is certainly going to increase markedly in the future on Crowfoot Valley Road. Crowfoot Valley Road is scheduled to be four-lane arterial in the future. Um, with each project that comes in, we are going to be asking them to widen that road um, to in front of their frontage, and then eventually the town will have to come in with a capital project and fully widen the road through the whole stretch. So that is the plan, is to widen that to a, fo a full four-lane arterial roadway that can handle that traffic. I guess I could, I could speak a little bit to the intergovernmental agreement comprehensive mm -hmm. plan as well. Uh, <clears throat> I know that you know, I, I, I was responsible for doing an update to the IGA a couple years ago, actually. Uh, this parcel in particular was designated R2 at, at one point in the IGA, which uh, was designated actually for mining operations. And that, in 2007, there was an application that was put forth through the Planning Commission and, and Town Council, but never went through uh, with regards to a mining application. Um, but that has since been revoked, and it has been, it's, in with, it's within the town's urban growth area, therefore reverting back to the town's master plan, which is residential medium density. It's three and a half dwelling units per acre. Uh, these folks are coming in right under that at 3.1. Um, Bryce, do you have anything to add to that? But Bryce has a little more history on the, on the IGA, but um, okay, yeah. Does the applicant want to speak to the wildlife study or whatever was done the wildlife? Sure, um, and Brian Connolly for the applicant. Um, the there was a, a environmental report that was done. Um, I wish I had enough copies to to hand in. Um, part of that environmental report, the, the first part actually dealt with with questions of whether the site had any contamination on it. It found that the site does not have contamination on it, and, and to the extent that there is you know trash or anything in the in the Lemon Gulch. Um, you know, I suspect that as part of the improvements that are being done to Lemon Gulch, that that would be cleaned up. Um, as for the wildlife, um, the, the report looked specifically at whether there were um, endangered species on the property and found that there were none. It looked um, for Preble's Meadow, Jumping Mouse, as well as Burrowing Owl. Um, there, were, there were none of that. Um, the only uh, habitat that it found um, was that there are some prairie dogs that are located on the site, and those prairie dogs will need to be relocated as part, you know, in, in accordance with, with town and state regulations. Um, the the uh, Lemon Gulch does serve as a, as a wildlife corridor, and so part of the purpose of the improvements that are being made would be to make it wildlife friendly for those movements. Um, but as far as uh, the, the maps that were shown um, that, that designated where, where they, um, uh, Ms. Wilson uh, showed uh, designated areas where there are wildlife, those are actually not this property. They're, they're several, I think, I think they're about a half mile or a mile south of this property. So um, hopefully that answers the question. Okay, questions for the applicant or for <coughs> Ryan? Um. Nope, I don't have any. I was going to add to planning commissioners that this was referred to the Colorado Division of Wildlife and they, they had no comment on it. Just, I'm looking at my notes. Just a, a quick question, Ryan. Um, the, the agricultural uses on the properties, on the property owners uh, <coughs> along Rich Lawn that, that have now, is that in the county or is that in the town? I, I get confused out there where... It's, it's Douglas don't. County jurisdiction. It's under the county jurisdiction? That's correct. And so that won't anything, it won't change their zoning or their rights to continue to do the kinds of things in terms of horses or any kind of uh, animals that they have on their property or anything? That's correct. Okay. Other question? Um, I just had the one concern that was raised regarding the um, open space that, that that would be deeded over to the to the to the town. That is incorrect. Uh, okay. It, it'll be the uh, ownership and maintenance of the HOA. HOA. Yep. Okay. That's the big 
Okay, the, yeah, sorry about that. The floodplain will go to the town. I'm okay. sorry. Lemon yeah. will come to the town then, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so Lemon Gulch will come to the town. And and you have seen the environmental impact. I have not seen the environmental impact reports directly. So I'm re you know, relying on your representation that, that, that we're not going to be with any, there's no additional liability going to be added to the town as a result of taking on that floodplain. That's correct, yeah. Okay. Other questions? No. No. Okay, then we will close the public hearing at 819. Uh, Planning Commission discussion. I, th I think our po position as a, ta a Planning Commission for the Town of Parker is to ensure that the nine criteria that the town sets forth are met and I think they do a very good job with developers in ensuring that the developer meets those criteria and a, and a quality product will be putting, put on the property. And I th think the, the uh, developer has worked very well in, in ensuring that limited traffic will be going on Rich Lawn and in the inclusion of the uh, Parker Water with that and the other entities that are involved with giving their approval or no comments to me assumes that they don't have a problem with this project going in. So with all that, I would be in, uh, intending to approve this. Uh, I, I, I agree with what Rich has said. We also meet the uh, five criteria for the site plan. Um, there's an article in today's Chronicle addressing water changes where they're going to change chlorine, but uh, I really doubt knowing what Parker Water is going to do with Hess, that they will be drilling a well. They'll have plenty of adequate wise water available coming out of Hess. And uh, so that part should not affect the homeowners. Uh, I, I understand the needs of the homeowners, but uh, to address one thing, the town of Parker is not uh, supplying all the homes for the metropolitan area. We're just one small cog in a mass of people who are exiting other states and coming to Colorado. Uh, you see the same thing in Lone Tree, Centennial. Uh, you go out by uh, DIA, that's all you see is houses. We're trying to maintain a quality home and a quality product in this area. And we're trying to, to keep this uh, still in, in a smaller town environment. We just, it's impossible to stop growth much as we'd all like to keep the things that were there. Uh, all of us came here years ago to see uh, a small town and it's grown up around us, but we're still here and we, we appreciate your thoughts and we hope you understand our thoughts. So I will be supporting the project. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you to everybody, um, the planning department, the developers, and the homeowners for showing up. Um, you know, whether you're a native or not, we all moved somewhere to for some reasons. Um, and I completely understand that from the moves that I have made um, through my lifetime. I do think this is consistent and it meets the criteria. What I have an issue with is the rezoning that I don't think we need to take every uh, agricultural piece of land and turn it into a development when there already is um, adequate zoning for commercial development within the town's master plan. Um, I understand we want to remain a com rural community. That's why we all possibly moved here. But we also moved from somewhere else and other people are, we're all part of the problem. We don't want anything in our backyard. And I also understand that because of s certain things that I am seeing with the zoning and the uh, surrounding areas, this may eventually be developed. I don't know that it's the right time, but if we don't let Colorado grow, if you don't have an economic, um, a strong economic state, then we're in a depressed state and we're going to be moving to other states to find what we're missing. So although I think this is a great project right now, I don't think it fits um, and I won't support the project. I do think that, you know, there's a lot of studies with regards to environmental impacts and wildlife.
there's a reason that the Colorado Depart Department of Parks and Wildlife was um, consulted and that there was an environmental assessment. And that is, it gives the experts those reasonings. And I think we need to take a look at that and say, we may not be the experts, we may not like it, and we may think we have seen other things, but we don't know the background. So I think, you, I think we all need to take um, a very respectful approach at this and appreciate what everybody's um, expertise is but I don't think that this is the time for this project. <clears throat> I concur with all of my com fellow commissioners on both sides. Um, it, it's difficult and it's hard to have development come um, where you have decided to you know where you have chosen to be in a rural community you've chosen to live outside of Parker and live in unincorporated Douglas County um, but this is part of the master plan for Parker um, my concern about these homes is is uh, you know the fact that it's a lower lower density than the the full density required is good I think they're awfully expensive homes um, but I wouldn't make my decision based on the price of the homes. It's just I would appeal to the developer to please try to find a way to bring in some homes for those uh, younger home buyers and some ranch homes for those of us for whom stairs are getting very difficult. Um, I, I'm going to vote in, in, in support of the, uh, the rezoning. Uh, it has been vetted now twice. This is the second time it's going through uh, the Planning Commission. Um, they have done due diligence, I believe, in trying to meet the uh, demands for uh, Parker Water and Sanitation. The investment that they're willing to make into Newland Gulch, I think, will benefit uh, everyone in the area. The benefit to the folks in the Richlawn area, they will now have a, a signalized intersection that they will be able to use at some point if uh, traffic becomes too difficult on Crowfoot. Um, so I will support this. Kim, was there a specific one of the criteria in that you felt that the plan did not meet? Um, I just, I, I, you know, it's the rezoning that I have okay. the issue with. Okay. I, I just had a question. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Okay. Um, I was told once that uh, when, when I first moved to the county uh, in 1986 that there were more units platted and approved than by the tens of thousands um, and you know watch the the county grow um, but again when a project comes before us and it meets the criteria set out in the land development ordinance and the criteria for zoning um, we are not about what the business plan is of the uh, the developer or owner of the property uh, we're about does this project meet the criteria as set out in the land de development ordinance and in the code and it does and so I will also be in favor uh, we, we need two motions tonight we need one for the zoning and one for the site or the uh, the sketch and preliminary plan uh, do we have a motion on the zoning I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve <coughs> the Meadowlark Plan Development Zoning. I'll second. It's moved by John, seconded by Rich, that the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Meadowlark Plan Development Zoning. Signified by yes. 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 Okay. N motion passes 5 1. Um, the second motion. On the sketch and preliminary plan, 
We have a motion. I move that the Planning Commission recommend that Town Council approve the sketch and preliminary plan subject to the four conditions contained in the staff report. I'll second. It's been moved by John, seconded by Rich. That the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the sketch and preliminary plans subject to the four conditions contained in the staff report. Again, signify that your approval by yes. 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 Motion also passes for one. Uh, all right, uh, any planning commission items for staff? No, sir. Any staff item? No, sir. Uh, Rosemary? Um, I just wanted to uh, mention that we have a study session planned tentatively for April 26th on the My Main Street project. On, the, on which again? Uh, My Main Street project. Okay, all right. And, and that's on April 26th? April 26th, and that'll be a study session at 530. Okay. So, um, thank you, Rosemary. Great segue. I forgot about that. So, answering your question, uh, Commissioner Rodell, uh, my Main Street taking my hat off and putting on my director of P3, it is a project that's being uh, guided by our Urban Renewal Authority in looking at future development and potentially disposition of the properties that we own in downtown, uh, that being the Pine Curve, the East Main. Uh, across from the library, the Pace lot in front of Pace Center, and then the uh, former ED Annex building that sits Candy Corner to Parker Station. Uh, we are currently going through a uh, community engagement process to understand uh, the community's envisioned uh, development for that site, uh, balanced through a market study. Uh, and this process that um, we would want to be bring forward to the Planning Commission would be able to go through a survey in which we've offered to the community to being able to provide insight and feedback as part of this overall project. I've already done it online. Mm -hmm. Well, now you get to do it in person again. Woohoo! Changed my and, mind. And <laughs> please give our best to Paul and his family. Yes, yeah. such exciting news. Wish them all news. our best. All right, then we will adjourn at 8:31.